What's up everybody? So today we're back in the garage working on the Subaru. Last video you guys saw, we got everything completely stripped out of this car. So at this point, it is a complete shell, but we need to go through because in the last video, we discovered that we have a slight kink in the frame rail. Didn't notice any body damage prior to this as far as fitment and everything goes. So I don't know if this has been repaired at some point, but I need to make sure that this frame is straight. So let's go ahead, pop the subframe out of this thing and uh, get some measurements on this. Now that we got the subframe out of the car, we can go ahead and get our measurements here. So I went ahead, I printed off the factory service manual for this vehicle here. So it has all the points of reference of where you're supposed to measure from, as well as the distances and what they are supposed to be at. So we can go ahead and see it, whether or not everything is square on this. We also are gonna go through, make sure that the vehicle is level to the ground and is all on a nice flat surface. So it should, it should be fine, because I've already got it all up on jack stands, but we'll just double check to make sure. And then as far as getting our measurements, we're gonna need a tram gauge. Now I don't have a tram gauge here. I saw plenty of videos online and saw of pictures and ideas as far as building your own, which I think I got a little bit better idea. So let's go and show you guys what I ended up picking up for that. So for the tram gauge here, I ended up picking up this square tubing here. It's about six feet long, which may be a little bit too long, but I think it'll work nicely for what I have planned here. Basically what a tram gauge is, is just measuring two points of reference within um, certain positions that Subaru has recommended. So we may be able to measure from like this strut tower bolt here to this, make sure the measurement is correct, and then go from like here to here, so that'd be one measurement, and then there to there, and as long as those four points match up from one another, it should be it should be square. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot more points to measure than just the ones I mentioned, but basically what the tram gauge is, is a straight, flat piece of metal, or flat bar, and it has two points of reference, so it's gonna have a little end piece here that comes out, sticks out about yay big. I think you can like adjust it and certain things like that to do your different distances as far as holes go. Basically, it's got one point here, one point here, and you just kind of measure amongst the holes that is recommended from the factory. So in my case, I had a little bit different idea. I picked up a couple other pieces. I actually grabbed a couple of these magnets. So as you guys can see here, these will set perfectly in these holes and not wiggle around. They've just got this nice little tip here and they just stick right to the bar. And of course, you can stretch the different lengths on them and change it out that way, which I think will be perfect, and especially this being a flat bar, they'll stay in place. So we should be able to take the measurements from Subaru, mark them out here on the bar, take our measurements, go from there to there, wherever Subaru tells us, and match it up from there to there, and see if, whether or not everything in this bay is straight. So I think that'll work for the tram gauge, and it is way cheaper than the ones I saw online. Like I said, most of the ones I saw were about $250, $300. This whole setup right here was maybe 20 bucks. So I figured that's not too bad, and uh, we're just kind of doing this at one time. So let's uh, make sure the vehicle is level here and then go ahead, get our measurements. Now we got this leveled out as best as possible. This here is our factory service manual for the datum points as well as the measurements. So most of this stuff here is just showing you points of measurement for like the rest of the chassis. Um, if you guys want, I'll link this down in the description below for you. But it shows exact points of reference as far as where to go. There'll be like little notes and stuff here at the bottom, which let's see here. So like right here will be our measurements. So 10 to 10, three to three, whatever. Um, should tell you what the dimensions are there as far as in millimeters and in inches. And you can just see there kind of references across the bay here. So you just have your different points of where you're supposed to go uh, in that picture there. Kind of shows what a tram gauge is supposed to look like, at least a uh, higher quality one than our homemade one. But I think the homemade one here should work. Um, I believe there's extra other points, which this is mostly chassis points. Here is the rest of the points here for the wagon. So it tells you like your distances and everything, what it's supposed to be from the 
side profile, underside, and, or I guess top and underside. So I guess there's everything there. So like I said, that should be hopefully everything that we need here. So let's go ahead and uh, do some measuring. Okay, so starting off first point here, let's go ahead and get our tape measure here. Measure this out. So we'll go to 525 millimeters, which will be right here. So that is from there to there. So basically, we'll take this go right here. So it mounts up on the edge there, so it is straight and parallel. And then we'll take our other one. We'll make sure that is centered there. So it is straight and parallel with that one. And then do our first measurement here. So we're going to take our measurements here. We're going from this hole in the cowl to the strut tower. We have got these leveled out, so they should. Just line up, so from that point, the strut tower, that looks to be level to me. It may look a little distorted on the camera just because you guys are on a wide angle lens, so it may show it looks like a little curvature, but it's not. So those ones look to be in spec. And we'll do the same thing and go from center point there to this strut tower as well. And it looks to be the exact same measurement. So looks like that portion of the vehicle is within spec. All right, hopefully you guys can see that there. But we are from point to point. We've got that leveled. I don't know if you guys can see that bubble there. So that's leveled as well. And so is that one. So looks like it's all good. Well, so far we've gone through, got everything measured here from the top view and it's all been within specification. I've gone through from that point and just measured across the strut towers, measured the rails here, gone from that point here to these points here and here, and just making sure they're all within specification. Same thing following those holes on the rails here. And everything looks to be pretty straight. It's just kind of bizarre that we have that one kink there and everything else is straight. So I guess next thing up, we'll go hop on the creeper here we got to get our measurements from the underside. So as you can see there, these are all my measurements that I have to reference here and look at. But you can see these are going to be straight across. These are going to be our diagonals. And you can see there it says 50, 50. So our number 50 here, we can check on the sheet. Looks like it is the lower radiator support. So we'll probably go right on the back side of there and uh, measure it to the opposite side. And it should be within that measurement there of 640 millimeters. So we'll just go through, go back and forth from all these reference points that it wants us to measure obviously do the cross ones, but yeah, having these sheets here, super handy. So I guess let's uh, keep on measuring. A few moments later. So it's a little hard kind of showing you guys what I'm doing underneath here, but I'm just going back and forth from point to point, getting my measurements. As you can see there, that is a kink in the frame rail there. And uh, I mean, it looks bad, but after doing all my measurements here, I went through, checked everything off my little list here, and everything I'm measuring is correct. So whatever somebody's gone through, obviously straightened this out, but left that kink there. You guys can kind of see there, there's been repairs done. You can see the welding wire popping through where that has been rewelded in. Not the best repair, obviously, because we still have this leftover kink. So I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with that. I don't know if we cut it out and replace it or whatever, I, I, I'm not sure. If you guys have any suggestions, throw it in the comments below, but it is nice to know that everything is in correct specification. I also went through, um, measured from the top of the rail down to the ground, and we got the same measurement from here on here as we did from here down to the ground, and then also going from here at the front of the rail down to the ground. So this is all leveled out and good. I also measured from the bottom side too, just to see if the measurements were the same, and yeah, everything is correct. So. Like I said, it's just weird that they would leave that as a kink, but I guess if you guys, like I said, have any suggestions as far as how to repair that, throw it down in the comments below, but at least it's good to know that this thing is straight so we can continue on with the restoration on this uh, Subaru. Well, after doing all those measurements, I gotta say, I'm relieved to know that this is all straight and within specifications. Just a little disappointed knowing that somebody went through, did this repair, and left the kink there in the rail. But uh, yeah, I did see more spots like you guys can kind of see there 
the paint runs where this has been repaired. You can see kind of back here where the paint reacted with the uh, obviously like oil or grease. So it's not the greatest of repairs, but they did go through and straighten it out. You guys saw the wire from the welder that has replaced this core support. So yeah, it is nice to know that the repairs have been done. May not be the best repairs. So we're gonna go through and try to address it and clean it up as best as possible. Like I said though, I don't necessarily know what to do here at the moment. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think we should do, whether or not we just cut that out, uh, weld a new metal there, just so it is nice, flush, straight, flat. Not a whole lot of options there, because I don't think I can find a new frame rail to obviously repa replace that or patch that. Probably might be something that we make. And as far as making this more structurally sound, obviously if I ever get another rack, I wouldn't want to have that to have a kink, because that's even more weak spot. But I think we could go through and strengthen up the chassis even more, whether or not we go through, stitch weld it, put tubs, do all that stuff. I mean, we have tons of options, but those at the moment are just ideas. We still have plenty of work to do on this car. Like I said, it's just relieving to know that this is all straight and doesn't need to go to the frame machine. But yeah, we have tons of stuff to do. So I think next up, we're gonna go through, completely strip the paint, strip the undercoating and everything out of this bay here because we gotta finish up the underside of the vehicle, get that completed. And I gotta go through and uh, finish up my patches. So we'll go through here in the upcoming videos and take care of our, or I guess continue on with our rust repair. So for now, Let's uh, get the wire wheel out and get this bay completely stripped. We got a lot of undercoating, rust, and paint to remove. As you guys just saw there, I got the rest of the undercoating stripped out of this engine bay, as well as a little bit of paint, seam sealer, and some of the rust. So I think for now, we're gonna go ahead and end up the video here because I'm kind of happy where we're at right now. We got it measured, everything looks to be within measurements, so we are good there. I wanna go ahead, just kind of give it a break, see what you guys have to say about that kink there, and then this area here. If you guys have any suggestions about what I could do here, obviously I wanna go through, delete the washer reservoir mount there, the battery tray, and the horn bracket. I think the horn bracket, we can put back underneath here of the radiator support, the battery tray, delete that. I think we can put that in the rear, tuck it in the back somewhere to relocate it. And then that um, mount there for the wash reservoir, I think we can use like a GD one, mount it up here on the back side, and I'll just kind of come up with this hole here. That way you just have this whole area cleaned up and make a little bit more room here in the bay. So I don't know, we'll give it a little thought. I'll look forward to your guys' suggestions and ideas, but we have plenty of stuff coming up for the Subaru. But I think right now it's going to be a good point to kind of end here with the engine bay. Because here in the next video, we'll go back into the rust repair. We'll get back into the floor pan. We'll get back into the rockers. Uh, we'll get into strut towers and all that stuff. So stay tuned for that. But hope you guys like this video. If you guys did, make sure a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.